It's the holiday season, so we were racking our brains on what ancient or vintage food we could recreate that has a holiday tie-in. We thought about fruitcake, latkes, yule logs, and of course, Christmas cookies. But there are so many kinds of Christmas cookies. And then bam, it hit us. What connects Queen Elizabeth I to Abraham Lincoln? Gingerbread men. Stay with us and let me explain. Hey there, I'm Sola L. Whaley, and this is Ancient Recipes with Sola. In each episode, we take a dish you may recognize and attempt to recreate one of the oldest versions of it to ever exist. So it's a little cooking, a little history, and a whole lot of me. What's not to love? Soft and chewy, crispy and crunchy, there's no denying how warm and comforting gingerbread men are around the holidays. And even if you butcher it and over bake them, at least they'll make cute gingerbread house decorations. Ginger cookies and crackers have been around a long time, like ancient Greece, Rome, Egypt, and even before that. But the original gingerbread men come from Queen Elizabeth I. Yep, gingerbread men are a royal creation. As we were diving into Queen Elizabeth's gingerbread story, another iconic figure kept popping up, Abraham Lincoln. Turns out he was obsessed with these little treats too. So in today's episode, we're gonna recreate Queen Elizabeth's gingerbread men using medieval cookie molds and recreate the stick figure looking gingerbread men that were Abe Lincoln's childhood fave. We gotta start with the OG, so a little background on the queen and her gingerbread men. Queen Elizabeth I reigned from 1558 to 1603 and had gingerbread men created as part of her lavish royal banquets. At these dinners, she would pull out all the stops, even having things like marzipan shaped like fruit, castles, and birds. It's said she had the first gingerbread men made in the image of some of her favorite suitors and guests, a sort of a culinary entertainment. She also had some decked out in gold leaf and added to the place settings. So the recipe of gingerbread that we're trying to recreate today comes to us just after Queen Elizabeth I reign, 1672 from Hannah Worley's The Queen Light Closet. That's where we got the pumpkin pie recipe from. This feels very familiar. <laughs> we're just gonna do this for a very long time. We went for like a really dark whole grain bread because that's what they would have had back then. So after grating all this bread, we're gonna sift it and then Whoa, surprise, we're gonna cook it with some wine. I haven't made a gingerbread like this. I know you may wanna watch me grate bread for an hour, but I don't think I'm gonna have any arms left. So we grated some already. It's already been sifted, so we can move on to making the dough. This is a very unique gingerbread recipe, for me at least. So we're gonna pop all these breadcrumbs into this pot. If this is delicious, it's kind of a great use of leftover bread. I don't know about you, but I save like every little end in the freezer to make breadcrumbs later. And now into here, we're gonna add some granulated sugar and a whole bunch of spices. She's the queen, so she could afford all the spices, right? So of course, ground ginger. Wouldn't be gingerbread without it. Now also cinnamon, so far, that's feeling pretty classic. Here's where it gets a little interesting. We've got some anise and ground licorice. Two things that I haven't put in my gingerbread before, so I'm interested to see how this combo tastes. And we're gonna cook it all together with some white wine until it turns into a paste. And then we cool that paste and pop it into those medieval cookie molds. Boom, gingerbread. So back then in the recipe, it called for claret, which today for us means red wine from Bordeaux. But back then that meant clear wine. So we're going with a nice white wine here. So the recipe said to use three loaves of bread, grated into crumbs and then sifted. But I don't know exactly how big their bread was. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water as needed to get to like a paste consistency. Maybe they had smaller loaves of bread than us. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, the heat, from the heat I can already smell the spices. From all this wine, I don't think this is for children, right? I am, I'm imagining we want it to be like a little bit looser than a cookie dough so that once it cools, it's like a cookie dough consistency. Like maybe a thick porridge. I don't know, I'm totally guessing. <laughs> With these Asian recipes, it's like half educated guesses. Half archeological evidence. Whoa. 
This is getting weird. I don't know what I was expecting, but I don't think this was it. I mean, it smells like gingerbread, but it's really getting stuck to the pot. All right, a little more water. I want to make sure all that sugar gets dissolved. During the Elizabethan era, banquets were a separate course eaten in a banqueting hall. It was kind of like a royal dessert buffet. There were some savory items too, and lots of desserts full of cookies and sweetmeats. I think, I think this mush is good to go. Everything's incorporated. It feels like a paste. And I'm gonna let this cool while we work on our Lincoln gingerbread cookie dough. I know what you're thinking. Lincoln and gingerbread men, I don't get it. But he became forever tied to them after telling a childhood story about gingerbread men to turn the tides at the Lincoln-Douglas debates during his Senate campaign in 1858. So we're gonna start by mixing up the wet. This gingerbread recipe feels more like a gingerbread I know. So we're gonna start by mixing some milk with sorghum syrup. A lot of times people would have used molasses now and then, but sorghum was really popular in the Midwest and South where Lincoln is from. And also molasses was a byproduct of slave production. So it makes sense that he didn't want to use that. But sorghum is delicious and I think we should bring it back. Let's bring back sorghum, guys. I like it. It's like smoky and nutty. Should we taste some sorghum on its own? Yeah. It's really good for cooking. You know, throw some chicken, glaze it with sorghum. I just like it on a pancake. It's not molasses-y, it's sorghum-y. I don't know, it reminds me of like Coca-Cola. So we're gonna stir that together just to like dissolve the sorghum. These gingerbread men are gonna be kind of a unique shape. Rather than molding them or cutting them out, we're gonna make little stick figures. Have you seen the Blair Witch Project? And you know how there's like stick people hanging in the woods? That's kind of what it looks like. It looks like something you'd curse someone with. But I guess that was cute back then. Okay, we are dissolved. Now we shall move on to the dry portion. Look at that. That already looks good. Okay, bowl, flour, activate finger whisk. Boom. We've got flour in here and we're gonna add something called saleratus, which was a precursor to baking soda. And, you know, this is a humble gingerbread, only one spice, ginger. Keeping it with the, you know, sticking with the essentials. And just a touch of brown sugar. I think that's gonna make it sweet and also crisp. Finger whisking time. Let's get all that dry combined. No salt, no salt, huh? No salt in that one either. They didn't know back then. You gotta season your desserts, just like savory food. Cool, now we're gonna add some butter and rub it in, just like when you're making a pie crust, until it's like sandy and, you know, the texture of cornmeal. We wanna rub that butter through. When people immigrated from Europe to America, they brought their gingerbread recipes with them, and then it kind of adapted to the ingredients they had here. So they replaced cane sugar with molasses, and then you got like a softer, chewier cookie. Okay, that looks good to me. Now I'm gonna make a little well. And we're gonna add our milk sorghum situation and stir that in. Okay, cool. Okay, so I wanna get into here and like mix this together a little bit better. So I'm gonna get in here with my hands. And I think that rolling these into like thin spindly men is gonna be a good idea so they get really nice and crisp because I have a feeling this is gonna be dense. I mean, it's an ancient recipe. They're usually dense. Okay, it is dough. It is a stiff and dry cookie dough. Now, making gingerbread houses actually gained in popularity in the 1800s, right after the Brothers Grimm released Hansel and Gretel. So, the actual story Lincoln told at the debate became a crowd favorite and was picked up by the papers as well. He became so well connected with the story that he would repeat it to visitors to the White House. Here's the story verbatim. When we lived in Indiana, once in a while my mother used to get some sorghum and ginger and make some gingerbread. It wasn't often and it was our biggest treat. 
One day, I smelled the gingerbread and came into the house to get my share while it was still hot. My mother had baked me three gingerbread men. I took them out under a hickory tree to eat them. There was a family near us poorer than we were, and their boy came along as I sat down. Abe, he said, give me a man. I gave him one. He crammed it into his mouth in two bits and looked at me while I was biting the legs off my first one. Abe, give me that other one. I wanted it myself, but I gave it to him. And as it followed the first, I said to him, you seem to like gingerbread. Abe, he said, I don't suppose anybody on earth likes gingerbread better than I do and gets less than I do. Yeah, well, I just keep this around. You never know with this show when you might need it. So I'm gonna start forming these gingerbread men by rolling a piece of dough into a size just larger than a golf ball. Is this a golf ball? We should have brought a golf ball for scale. Did they have golf balls back then? The recipe said golf ball. Okay, I'm gonna go gentle. I think this is gonna take some time to get into a 12 inch log. So the campaign between Lincoln and Douglas was really heated. But in this debate, Douglas started with a bunch of compliments to win over the crowd before switching to personal attacks and accusations of Lincoln. And then Lincoln told this gingerbread story to try and like win over the crowd, relate himself to the Hoosier boy by saying, nobody loved compliments from Douglas more than Lincoln and he hardly ever got any. We wanna go for about 12 inches and we're gonna break off four inches for the arms and then fold over the rest into like a little loop to be the head and legs. Cool, cute. Okay, all right. So we have this long like cookie dough noodle. I'm gonna rip off a few inches and those are gonna be the arms. Now this bit, we're gonna make a little loop and pinch it together, boom. Head and feet. Let's add our arms. And there we go. That's our little creepy gingerbread man. Hey, should we like pose them in different ways? Let's do that. There's one. Hello. This one's saying hello. Little dance. And we just keep going. Arms. It's a lot like Play-Doh. You're just rolling them out. Body. All right, so now I'm gonna put these little guys in the oven and we're gonna form Elizabeth the first gingerbread. So while our Lincoln gingerbread stick figures bake, we're gonna return to Queen Elizabeth's. This dough has cooled and we're gonna mold it. So back then they didn't have cookie cutters and instead they would have used these intricate carved wooden molds. So we're gonna give this a shot. This is me with the angel wings and I think this is Gif with the hat and the Christmas tree. Or maybe it's Santa, I don't know. You know, it could be whatever we want it to be. I'm not sure if these are gonna pop out, so just for safety, I'm gonna brush it with oil and dust it with flour. That feels right. And I get into every little nook and cranny, and I wanna do like a really light coat. If you overdo it with the oil, you'll just end up with clumps of flour. Everything about this one versus Abraham Lincoln's, like you can tell the class, not only in the dough and the ingredients, but even how it's molded. Like you gotta have money to have a mold like this. It's expensive now, so I imagine it was very expensive back then. You know what I'm saying? Flour. Tipping it in. I think it's really fun to find out what these iconic figures were into eating. So if there's any like other iconic historical figure whose food you want us to dig into, let us know in the comments. Give us some ideas. Maybe your idea will be a ne the next ancient recipe episode, huh? Okay, I'm doing this just like flouring a cake pan. A little sprinkle and we're gonna tap and make sure we get out all that excess. Let me move this oil because I'm gonna tap aggressively. Whoa, whoa. So you want a really light coat, just a fine dusting. So you gotta tap aggressively. This is how you would butter and flour a bump pan, huh? All right, let's get in here. Oh, okay, so now that it's cold, it's gotten really sticky and it feels more like dough. Whoa, then we'll pack it in, try and level it off and smack it out. That's the goal. I don't know what's gonna be the reality here. So I'm, I'm this is my first time molding cookie dough like this, but I'm gonna try and like make sure I kind of press firmly, get into those nooks and crannies. I imagine that's gonna matter. 
Let's see. Smush it in there, smush it off. We'll deal with one at a time. I'm using the back of a knife, but you know, if you're a child, go for something dull. I'm a professional, you know? If I cut myself, I can continue. Oh no, oh gosh, this is sticky. Hold on. Okay, I'm gonna try again. All right, we decided to try a different utensil, flowered bench scraper, and this seems to be working better. So these banquets that Queen Elizabeth I would have were, were bonkers. They would have sugar plates, sugar castles, sugar statues, so you can eat your dessert and then eat your plate, just like Willy Wonka. Okay, I think that's pretty good. We got our edges clean. Let's see how this flips, yeah? Let me put it here so you can see. How's that? I'm gonna go like one aggressive slap. Good work. Damn it. Ooh, okay. We did it. Okay, all right. I see, there's some details here. I can see she's carrying a basket, whoa. All right, let's try this man. Dough, going in. Let's try oiling up our hands again. That seemed to help with the spreading. Yeah. Press it in. This is a large cookie. Like this is your whole entree. Like you just eat this cookie and then you're good to go, right? This can't be for one, right? Could it be for one? I don't know. Okay, smush. Let's cut it off. All right. We're, things are going much smoother. Cool, cool. Okay. And then one more aggressive slap to get this guy out. And we're gonna bake these. I'm gonna see if I can transfer it. Oh, that was good. Okay, so you really must be aggressive with these cookies. And it's pretty sturdy. Ooh, okay, all right, huh. We're going into the oven, and then we're gonna taste both of our gingerbread people. Okay, our gingerbread is out of the oven. It's cooled a little bit, and it's finally time to taste. First of all, I love how they both held their shape. We still have all the detail on these uh, Queen Elizabeth gingerbread people, and my little uh, happy stick figure men are exactly the way we left them. They plumped a little bit, like spread just a, just a tiny bit, but that dough was so weird and oily, I, was, I had no idea what would happen, so that's pretty cool. Smells great. I guess I'm gonna start with the original, Queen Elizabeth's. Smells good. It's still like a little bit uh, soft. I feel like this is gonna be more of like those tender gingerbreads. It actually just like feels a bit like bread, which makes sense because that's how it started out. <laughs> it was very dense. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think this is more decorative than delicious. Really spicy. A lot of spices coming through. I taste every single one. There's so much cinnamon, it actually is hot. Same thing with the ginger. And the licorice, you know, it licorice kind of does this cool thing where it, it kind of coats your palate a little bit. So I'm getting everything very distinctly. It is like powerful on the spices. The texture, it just tastes like one of those really dense breads, which makes sense because we took bread and made it denser, just packed it in there. So texture wise, mm. Mm, you know, but the flavor is really cool, really, really intense. And I feel like this is something that'd be good to have like after you've had a really large banquet of food because all the spices can kind of help you digest a bit. But um, yeah, cool. All right, let's try these guys. Here we go, let's break off a leg. She's a dancer, so I think that would be the best thing. Yes, <laughs> nice and crisp. Hmm. Very like breadstick-like, not just in the texture, but in the smell. It got really nice and toasty. Mm. 
Really mellow on the spice. Ginger in the back, but it doesn't hit you in the throat the way Queen Elizabeth's does. And instead, this is more about the sorghum. That's the flavor that comes through. This is nice and crisp, very mildly sweet. I think this would be one of those things you want to like dunk in coffee. It feels like a biscuit that I want with like tea. It needs a little, little dip for moisture. But um, both are pretty different from gingerbread I have today. I think the biggest difference is that they're not very sweet. I think that the modern gingerbread is like, it has like a snappy, crisp texture from the sweetness and like a soft chew also. So I think that's because it's less sugar. What kind of gingerbread do you like? I am all about crisp. I love the thin, snappy ones. I don't even want icing on it. That's my favorite. But if you have a favorite, let us know in the comments. But this was really fun. I like seeing how it started, you know, and, and it's really cool to see the stages, the original the secondary, and then we already know the gingerbread we have now and love. I think if I were ever to make this again, I would let it rest, and I feel like not only will that make it easier to handle, but I think maybe it'll make it a little bit more tender, and often when you let your cookie dough kind of age, it also gets a little more flavorful. If you like this episode, be sure to like and subscribe, and if there's an ancient or vintage recipe you wanna see me try out, let us know in the comments, and I'll see you next time.